Welcome to Acoustic Guitar Episode 6, Strumming and Rhythm Grids. Now this time we're going to study acoustic guitar strumming technique and how strumming interacts with rhythm duration. Now in part one here, what we're going to do is break down the use of strumming ideas for acoustic guitar that work on basic eighth note grooves. And these patterns are going to help you get an introduction to straight time feel and how it works when using strum patterns. Now we're also going to look at spending some time on the importance of developing string set associations as well and the value of learning to isolate strumming across different grid areas and that's going to be involved with the string set isolation there. Now another grid area concept we're going to work on is based entirely on rhythm and it's going to be on a concept of how many beats are in the measure, where we're making those subdivisions and how we're going to attack them in time. So basically that's part one but in part two, I hope you'll join me for part two, that's going to be in the members area of my website. In part two we're going to study mix Mixing string sets and altering the feel of rhythm. So we're going to get into some syncopated concepts there. Plus we're also going to include arpeggio and scale lines so that we can learn to generate even more versatile acoustic guitar parts. So let's get started here in part one of the lesson and we'll just zoom in on the neck and get going. So in example number one, we're just going to do introduction here to straight time strumming. And before I get started, I wanted to mention that, you know, strumming on the guitar and the acoustic guitar can be done with or without a pick. And in these examples, I'm not going to be using a pick. I'll just be using the top part of my fingernail for down strums. And then when I do up strums, I'll just be using the pad of the finger as I bring the, uh, the finger upwards. This is going to strike with the upper uh, strum on the uh, pad portion of my finger on index. So, you know, you can design your own way of doing your strumming technique, it's up to you. Some people really grow their fingernails a lot longer. Uh, other people will use a thumb pick. Some people will just use a standard flat pick. Uh, some people kind of do it the way I'm doing it here. It's up to you, but whatever method that you choose, you know, that's your choice. And however, you know, you do the strumming, the strumming attacks are more or less gonna be the same kind of thing. It's just, you know, if you have an object in your hand, like a pick, or whatever, it's just going to have a little bit different dynamic to it than as if you're using your straight ahead fingers. So let's just get to the idea of what we're really doing here in example one, because I have these different breakdowns of a D major chord done with some different kind of rhythmic ideas going on. And there's going to be three of them. So we'll have uh, example 1A, 1B, and 1C. And everything's going to be linked up to strum direction in these examples. We have the one chord, we're just going to be looking at those upper four guitar strings when we're you know scanning through this and each chord attack is going to be linked to the feel of a rhythm duration so for example a quarter note takes each of the downbeats so if we have a quarter going on it's always one two three four and on the ups you know we're missing so there's always sort of a grid of a down and an up and we're tracking you know in the Feel, the hand is always moving and that keeps us in time and it keeps our groove together. So after the downbeats of the quarter note, there's also the eighth note which takes both the down and the up. So we'll have a down, up, down, up. That's our eighth note feel. And then, you know, when we get into sixteenths, it's a little bit busier because it's just going to be doubling that value of the eighth note. So. You know, that's basically the beat right there. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. But you notice all the time though, when we come back around to that down beat, it's always going to have that down strum to it. So paying a lot of attention to where your downs and where your ups are at, uh, that's going to be a really big factor in how your strumming comes together for you. So let's get started here on example 1A. This is a very simple example. It's just going to have a quarter note with a couple of eighth notes going on. So we'll go down, that's our quarter note. Then on the second beat, we're going to have eighths. So it's going to be two and, and then the third beat will be down again and then we'll have four and as our next eighth notes coming in. Now the strum patterning is gonna be like this. Down, down, up, down, down, up. It's always following that pattern. Down, down, up, down, 
down up. And that's going to be really very consistent because we have the quarter note and then a couple of eighth notes. Now when we move on to example 1B, here it gets a little bit different because we have some different structure with sixteenths coming in. So we'll have on the first beat, we'll have the down and then we're going to miss and we're going to have down up. So that's going to be the sixteenths coming in. One knee and up, just like that. Down, down, up. The second beat has a quarter note on it again, so we're going to have two, like that. Then on the third beat, we're going to reverse the structure of the, uh, of the system that we're using on the strumming pattern because on the downbeat of one, we had it with the eighth note and then the sixteenths, but then on the downbeat of three, we're going to have the sixteenths coming up first, so it'll be one E and then the eighth note on the and. So one E and, or sorry, three E and, just like that. And then we have the fourth beat coming in last. So you can tell there's a reversal on the field because in the beat of one, we've got this, one E and a. Uh. But then on the beat of three, we've got this, three E and a. Uh. So this is, sometimes to sing it, you know, is a better way to approach it because you get it kind of more inside yourself. Da, 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 that's the first one on the beat of one. And then dun, dun, da for the th beat of three there. So dun, da, da, or the reversal, dun, dun, da. So if you have the handout, if you remember my website and you're, you know, you've downloaded the handout for this and you're looking at it, then basically what you need to do is understand that the feel overall is going to be changing when we're moving through these different values. And that's the most important thing is you got to get a an inclination in the back of your mind of you know how you're going to hear these approaching prior to them actually arriving in your playing. So we've got this da 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 da. That's the beginning of example one B, and then this ending part of example one B goes like this da 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 da. So like this again da 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 da. All right. So that's basically example 1B. It's an adding of some 16th note concepts and you know getting a little bit more involved. Now, example 1C is going to be a lot more involved because we're getting into um, more 16ths that are getting added, but we're also adding in a dotted eighth in the fourth beat of the measure. Now, let me go through the front end of the measure first. We have a stream of 16th notes on the beat of one. So we have one E and a, and then the second is just straight eighth, so it's going to be two and. And then on the third beat, we have the two sixteenths up front with the eighth in the back, so it'll be three E and a. And then on the fourth beat, that's where we get that dotted eighth note idea coming in. So it's going to be four E and a. So bum bum, like that, sort of a more punchy you know, flow to it. So all together, we get one E and a, two and three E and a, four E and a. Again, one E and a, two and three E and a, four E and a. If you sing it, sometimes, you know, like I'd mentioned earlier, it gets a, a little bit more into the back of your memory. So if you can sing it like this, da 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 you know, something like that. Any kind of verbalization you can make of it. You know, you it, it just kind of gets more into your brain and you get a better feel for the groove on it. Again, da 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 you know? So I'll just play it now for you so you can just hear it alone. Right. So that brings us to the end of example number one. We're going to take a short break. When we come back in example two, we're going to be looking a little bit more at string set association and some isolated strumming. And so that means we're going to be getting into some other chords. We'll have a C chord, a G chord, there'll be a D minor and an A minor that'll come up. We'll have another example with F, C, and G. So it would be kind of a really nice one there for example too because we're going to start breaking the string sets up a little bit and looking at the guitar layout as a sort of a grid section there of string sets. So we'll take a short break and come back right away with example number two. Well, before we go any further into the video, I wanted to break down the idea of the beat grid. I wanted to get some of these examples that we just covered going into here so you understand where the attacks take place. Some of you may already recognize this type of grid because it is popular for things like uh, FL Studio, you know, anything where you're using a DAW where you're pro programming drum beats and so forth. You can see here these, uh, you know, the, the keys that are lit up, you know, these are the different areas of the kicks and the snare and the hi-hats and everything that you're dealing with. So you may be familiar with this already, with this beat grid structure. Uh, let me pull up our first example 
uh, there it is. There's example number 1A. And if I was to put this example into the grid, it would look like that. So there's your dots and here's your breakdown of those dots uh, into the beat grid. So there's your quarter note. Here's your couple of eighth notes, quarter note on the third beat, couple of eighth notes here on the fourth beat. So what's really happening is in the beat grid, these four cubes, these squares right here, these represent the 16th note. And we'll see that in a moment when we go to example 1B. But the 16th note, you know, is going to be just the grand execution of everything within that beat um, where we fall for whatever kind of attack that we're playing that's where we're going specifically across this uh, entire measure here you can see these are the four beats here obviously so let me pull up another one I'm just gonna give you a new grid here so there's a new fresh grid here is example 1b you can see now we have some 16th notes and then here's the dot system, you know, showing you exactly where those attacks take place. So here it's getting more specific. You can tell there's the first eighth note. Here's these couple of sixteenths in that same beat grid. And then we move on. We have a quarter note there. And then we have a couple of sixteenths into an eighth. And then we have that final quarter note right there on the fourth beat. So learning about the beat grid really helps you to understand where to make your attacks. You know, you can start looking at the grid and understanding where some of these attacks are going to fall closer together. Uh, you know, you remember me probably mentioning how it's important to sing a lot of times too. You know, if I sang this here, it'd be dun, 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 dun. So if you look at the execution of this across the beat grid, we've got ba, bum, bum, ba. Bum, 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 bum. You know, you get the whole setup of it and you see how closely aligned all of these attacks are. So take this into consideration when you're building your beats and your structure of strumming because where everything falls, how it looks across the beat grid, this is a very good exercise to do to help better yourself in understanding how your rhythm and strumming is getting executed within the structure of a measure. Now let me move away from this for a moment. I want to go over to our uh, guitar grid for a second here because there is one more thing I want to discuss and this has to do with, you know, when you're dealing with with your strumming across the neck. Now I have this arrow here that I've created and with this arrow I wanted to just help you better understand the attacks that you're making in your strings. Now let's say you're making an attack that's just onto the lower strings. When your pick strikes across the guitar strings you want to make sure that it's localized to exactly where that attack takes place there. So if I did a, an attack that's just covering sixth, fifth, and fourth strings, I want to make sure that my strum is executed in a way that really targets those string sets. Same thing if maybe I was on the inside four strings from fifth string to second string. I want that strum attack to be really isolated and perfected so that I'm just grabbing those strings. If it's maybe only the top three guitar strings, like in a D major chord, and I only wanted the upper three notes, well again, isolating those groupings of strings and understanding the string sets and the guitar fingerboard more like a grid system, just like we were looking at the beat in terms of a grid system, this can be super helpful for you, again, but more from a physical attack at the guitar strings perspective. So keep all these ideas in mind. This is the grand scheme of things when it comes to this entire grid system. There's a grid system in the attack onto the guitar strings. There's a grid system for the beat structure that we're looking at. Understand these two concepts and your gu rhythm guitar and I guess I should really say the perfection that you have for rhythm guitar is going to go way, way up. So now with this out of, the, out of our hair, <laughs> let's move next to example two and uh, start into that uh, exercise. Hey everyone, Andrew Wasson. Just wanted to make a quick announcement about creativeguitarstudio.com. You know, if you haven't grabbed a free membership yet, just head to the website, click on create account, fill this form out, and you got a free lifetime account to the website. Once that's in place, you can just jump into the members area here where we got all the lesson plans. And my quick announcement I wanted to make is I'm really excited because we've got the latest installment in the advanced guitar program posted to the site. Now in the advanced guitar program is packed 
packed full of information. Each of these project lessons is around two and a half hours of instruction. There's probably around 160 to 180 hours of instruction just in these lesson plans alone. The latest installment covers minor pentatonic and there's 24 videos. This, this uh, lesson plan is two hours and 45 minutes long when you run through all the lessons. If you've got a full premium membership, you can download the course files and an MP3 jam track. It's really quite the program. So if you're looking for a really serious guitar course online, right from beginner, you know, I've got the introductory program here, or intermediate, if you feel like you're more of an intermediate player and you want to work through, you know, lesson plans that are really geared to understanding the guitar fingerboard much better, you know, so if, if that's kind of your level, I've got those set up, but, you know, a lot of people really enjoy the advanced material. It's all the major scales, major seven arpeggios and chords and minors and pentatonics and lots of improvisation exercises throughout here. So if you really want to jump into some great step-by-step -step material that is really organized and in, in no way is it some kind of random guitar course. Like I know I've heard so many complaints over the years about all the random lessons and then probably for a lot of you, you're sick of the random lessons on YouTube that don't follow any kind of order and sequence. Well, you know, grab your free membership, start with that. But you know, when you're ready to advance to sort of the next level there, you can grab one of my membership plans, basic monthly memberships, $19.95 a month. And then if you want to upgrade to the premium package, you do save $60. It's a one-time payment of $179.40, but that does give you full access to everything on the site. If you want a great step-by-step, well-organized guitar course, just head over to creativeguitarstudio.com and set up your membership today. Well, an example too, you can tell right away that I'm mixing a lot of rhythms, I'm isolating strumming quite a lot, and there's even some syncopation that's going on with that isolated strumming. So there's kind of a lot to cover here, and I wanna just get right into this and break down what's going on. Um, in example number two, you know, the down and up attacks of the rhythmic durations, you know, they're only one part of this whole strumming grid system. Another big element of this has to do with the string sets that are involved with the strum attack. And in example two, we're going to explore string groups and how a more isolated approach to strumming can benefit the sound of our rhythm parts. Now, in example 2A, the mid, lower, and upper sections of the guitar strings are isolated into different segments. So this is, you know, thinking of this lower section, the more middle section, and then the more upper section of the guitar. So thinking of it in a grid like that, you know, groups of basically three strings at a time, you could say, and it's kind of like sixth, fifth, and fourth, and then, you know, fifth, fourth, and third, and then third, second, and first, or you could have fourth, third, and second. So these different groupings of your string sets as you go across, you can even isolate them into grids of two. So you could have sixth and fifth, and fifth and fourth, or you could have uh, fourth and third, you know, and, or you could separate them, you could have fifth and third, you know, there's all kinds of ways to approach this because we have so many different opportunities there when we start bringing in the, you know, the finger picking and all that. Now, what we're going to do though, to keep this really straightforward is we're going to look at it as for the first chord that comes up in example 2A, it's a C major chord, and we're just gonna use that on some eighth notes. So it'll be down, up. Just like that, very straightforward. We're using the interior portion, but we're not using the first string. So that high first string is not part of the mix there, and neither is the low sixth string either. It's just the four inside strings, so from fourth to second. And we're hitting them together on an eighth note feel, so down, up, just like that, one and. Then what happens on the second beat with that C chord is we're having a 16th and a dotted eighth come in, so it'll be like this, two E and a real quick shot there, so down, up. So we have the in time, you know, feel of the eighth note, one and the real balanced feel, and then the more choppy feel coming into the second beat, 
two E and uh, like that. Then we move into the G chord and we're going to be going on the lower register notes only. So this G chord is only going to operate with sixth, fifth, and fourth strings. So we're isolating the strumming now. We're looking at this sort of lower chunk of strings as our sort of a hit and our attack grid. So we're going to be going one E and uh, that's our third beat. Da -da -da, just like that. And then we're going to have the fourth beat with the 16th and the dotted eighth again there. So four E and uh, like that. So the third beat on the G chord, remember just going on the low strings only. Uh, we're going to be going sort of three E and uh, so three E and uh, and then four E and uh, so bum 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 ba da, just like that. That's the G chord. Very low register sound on that too because the low strings are the only part of the, the structure. So again, this is measure one of example 2A. We have da, 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 on the C chord, and then on the G chord, bum, bum, ba, ba, da. Then we're going to move over to the next measure. We're going to have a D minor chord coming in. It's just going to be straight eighth notes on the downbeat of that one. So down, up, one, and. And then on the second beat with that D minor chord, we're going to have a stream of sixteenth notes, two E and up. And you can tell my strumming pattern there, just down, up, down, up. So we're dealing with those sixteenths in that second uh, feel, or I should say second beat, pardon me. So we have on the first beat, down, up, those are the eighth notes, and the second beat, down, up, down, up for the sixteenths, double time basically. So one and two E and uh. Then the chord changes on the third beat of example 2A, we have an A minor come in on a quarter note. And then what's going to happen is on the fourth beat, we're going to have an eighth note with a couple of sixteenths, so it'll be four E and uh. So the third beat will be A minor, so three, four E and uh. And you can tell how I'm doing the strum pattern. Watch those strumming indicators on the page because, you know, they're going to be very helpful for you on getting the right part of the attack inside the whole grid of the sixteenth note feel. So we have four E and uh. So it's going to be down, down, up. Okay, so organize everything in terms of maybe two beat chunks because that way you should be able to get all the punches together. The chords are operating within a two beat structure, you know, from the front of that uh, uh, first measure where we have C and G, you're having that one and two E and, uh, and then the third beat comes in with the new chord, the G chord, which is the isolated low string sets of strumming. So three E and a four E. So sort of like that. So bum ba da da bum bum ba ba da like that. And then we're moving to the D minor. One and two E and uh and then we have the A minor come in. Three, four E and uh. So really nice sound, lots of isolated strumming. So you really try to take care of different string set groupings, you know, whatever those groupings may be. And that's probably the hardest part of this, is really getting all that isolation down. Here's example number two A one more time though. So work on that. Keep a metronome or a drum machine on so you're just constantly getting that feel of the proper beat and all that. Um, let's move on though to example 2B. This is where we're having some syncopation with some isolated strumming going on here. Because again, remember what we're trying to do. We're trying to get associated string sets so we can strike on certain groupings of strings. And then the other thing we're trying to do is bring in more feel, you know, more ideas that have to do with uh, different timing and so forth. We've really been working a lot so far on quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenths and all that. But now what we're going to do is we're going to start getting to a little bit of sy syncopation here. So we're going to lose the downbeat of three of the first measure. And then coming into the second measure of example 2B, we're going to lose the downbeat of one. The other thing we're going to be doing is quite a lot of really isolated strums because the chord changes are going to be F, C, and G. And well, I'll describe the final part in just a moment because it's a little bit different. We're going to be doing some double stops there, but let's just work on the first end of this. Um, the F chord, we're only working between fourth, third, and second strings. And then on the C chord, we're just working fifth, fourth, and third strings. And then on that G chord, we're just working on sixth, fifth, and fourth strings. So we get this small attacks there. And then the feel though, but because we're going off time a little bit, it starts on a dotted quarter note. So we have that one and two, and then the upbeat of two is where we strike on that C chord. And then the upbeat of four is we where we strike on the G chord. So we're gonna go down, up, 
and up. So the feel of those attacks is on the backbeat. Let me count the beat for you so you can really hear the structure. One and two and three and four and one, two. Okay, let's talk about the end of this riff now. On second measure, when we're wrapping things up, we've got a series of double stops. So, you know, I want you to pay lots of attention right now to my fretboard hand here. Uh, we're going to start off on the A and the C. That's going to be the first attack. It's going to be on second and first frets of third and second strings. And then we're going to have open strings on G and B. And that's going to be a strike upwards with the pick or with your you know finger in this case I'm using my finger so three and so down up and then we're going to move over to the fourth and third strings where we have a little two note F chord so that's going to be third fret second fret of fourth string to third string and then we're going to open those two strings up with an up strum so it's going to be down up down up one sorry I just got to count off three pardon me three and four and Alright, so now I'll put the whole thing together. This is example 2B, the whole thing. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1, 2. 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1, 2. 3 and 4 and 1. Okay, so now, you know, when you're working on stuff like this, a couple things you're going to be wanting to pay a lot of attention to is the precise, you know, attack that you have and trying to get that as best as possibly can. You may, if you're more comfortable with using a pick, you may want to do that in the beginning because, you know, I, with using finger style and using the finger approach, it's, it can be a little bit more sort of looser feeling and you might strike other unwanted strings sometimes. Uh, you know, most of it, you know, we're just going to be fairly accurate for you, so it's going to sound okay. But, you know, really in a lot of these cases, Sometimes what might happen is you may balance the strumming with some picking concepts and we're going to be discussing that actually in part two of this lesson because I have some strum patterns mixing with arpeggios and with scales and we're going to look at some other mixed rhythm ideas too. So, you know, in part two we're going to get more into the application of, you know, some of the finger plucking ideas, you know, and how that can affect the combination of that um, aligned with strum patterning. So, you know, lots of stuff to go and break down here anyway way for you in part number one of this uh, lesson plan so you know do this work and uh, this brings us here to the end of part one and then when we come back like I say in uh, uh, lesson plan uh, uh, part two here we're going to be going through some different strumming you know concepts that are mixed a little bit more a little bit more syncopation and what's really going to be interesting though is the addition of the arpeggios and the scales now you will need to have a membership to the website to be able to do this uh, second part of the lesson. And uh, you can just get that sorted out for yourself if you go to creativeguitarstudio.com. You can sign up at first for a free membership and just kind of get into the site, browse around a little bit. If you have any questions, you can always email me or give me a telephone call in my studio. You know, if you have questions about how the site works, you know, what goes on when you purchase a membership that's either a basic monthly or what happens when you purchase a premium lesson plan and, you know, all that stuff. I have people phoning me all day and, you know, I have uh, people contacting me through the website and everything. I'm fairly accessible uh, most times. So Monday to Friday, I'm around the office. So most time through the day, Central Standard Time, you can reach me quite easily. Uh, you can probably do a faster job of reaching me generally by uh, sending me an email, and I can answer all your questions about how the whole system works inside the site. You have lots of opportunity for lesson plans in there. There's loads of stuff, and uh, aside from these electives that we're doing here, like this acoustic guitar course, there's also a lot of great information uh, with the actual guitar programs where. I've got the introductory and the intermediate and the advanced course. So uh, by all means, check it out. Go register for a free membership at creativeguitarstudio.com. Uh, pull out a, a basic or a premium membership package, and uh, you can join me in the members area for part two of this lesson. Uh, until next time, thanks for joining me, and uh, we'll catch up with you again in the next video. If you want to learn the modes and get a really good understanding for how they can be used musically to write songs, play a solo, or compose melody lines, then you're in luck. My ebook, Using the Major Scale Modes, is a comprehensive manuscript outlining exactly how modes are used in respect to harmony and to compose or improvise melodic ideas. Over 50 pages of scale patterns, example progressions, and music theory all come together to create a comprehensive method on how to use the modes that's easy to understand. Using the major scale modes is available for instant download in the View Our Products area at creativeguitarstudio.com.
Thanks for watching part one of the lesson. Be sure to sign up for a membership at creativeguitarstudio.com to watch part two. In part two, we'll expand on these ideas using advanced strum patterns with arpeggios and scales. Plus, as a member, you'll also be able to download the handout for this lesson along with many more professional guitar lessons. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch up next in the members area.